Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to the Subcheck 1.4 exercise video. So in this video, we're just going to be solving a couple limits to get more familiar with solving limits. Okay, so in the first one, this says we want to find the limit as x approaches six approaches x approaches six one over x minus three squared. Okay, so we just want to find this limit. So if I plug in six, right? Is anything going to go wrong if I plug in six? Am I going to get zero on the bottom? Is this thing going to blow up? Uh, no, it won't actually. So what I can do is just plug this thing right in direct substitution property. So let me go ahead and plug this thing in. So one over six minus three squared, and that's just one over three squared, and that's just one ninth. And that's it. That's the answer. Okay, so that was... Wasn't too bad. So let's go ahead and check out this next example. So limit as x approaches three of x squared minus six x plus nine over x minus three. So once again, you want to see if you can plug it in right away. So if, can I plug in three right away? Well, if I plug in three right away, I'll get zero on the bottom, right? I'll get zero on the bottom, which is a big, big no-no. It blows it up. Can't do it can do it. So what you can do is actually use your algebra skills and factor the top. So notice I'm writing equals limit, right? You have to keep writing that over and over again, but you know, you have to keep writing that over and over again until you plug in what you're approaching. So the top one, what does this factor into, right? We've done some practice with this. So you want to find two numbers that multiply to nine and add up to negative six, right? Those two, those two numbers. So multiply to nine and add up to negative six. So what two numbers are that? Well, that would be negative three and negative three. Okay, so negative three times negative three is positive nine. If you add them up, it's negative six. So this factors into x minus three times x minus three at the top. And so these guys cancel out. And so what you're left with is, I'm writing the limit again, x minus three. Okay. And notice it's not like equals x minus three. That's also wrong. That's something I see students do a lot. Um, that's also wrong. It's just limit equals, it's just equals limit with the whole thing attached to it, attached by the hit. So if I plug in three, is this thing gonna blow up? Well, no, because if you think about it, it's over like one, right? You're in the numerator right now, so it's okay to plug in three. So if I plug in three, I get three minus three, which is just zero, and that is okay. Okay, it's okay to have zero. It's okay to have zero divided by something, but it's never okay to have uh, be divided by zero. Okay, let's check the next one out. So this one is we have a square root in the top, so we got to rationalize the numerator. So we're going to multiply by its conjugate, square root of x plus 3 over square root of x plus 3. And so if I multiply this out, right, kind of like scratch work, x minus three times square root of x plus three, this becomes square root of x times square root of x is actually just x minus, sorry, plus three root x minus three root x minus nine. And these guys cancel out and you're left with x minus nine. So let's say like scratch. Okay. So keep it going. And so you got to rewrite your limit, right? Limit as x goes to nine. And this becomes on the top x minus nine over x minus nine times square root of x plus three. Okay. So these guys cancel out. What you're left with is limit as x approaches nine of one over square root of x plus three. And is it okay now for me to plug in nine? Yeah, because it's not gonna blow up. 
right? I'm not going to get a zero on the bottom, as opposed to if we plugged in nine here, we would have got a zero. All right, so that's why we're doing this algebraic manipulation. So now I could plug in nine, and now the limit goes away. So I get one over three plus three, which is just one sixth. Okay, and that's the answer. All right, so that's a couple examples of just solving regular limits, right? We could just plug it in. We got to factor some out, or we got to like conjugate or rationalize a numerator or denominator. Okay, so now let's go and check out some infinite limits, right? Limits going to infinity. So remember, there's always like those three options that we have. Right, three options, right? We have the three options of uh, bottom being bigger than this top. We'll do like this, bottom being smaller than the top and the bottom equal in the top in terms of powers of the X. So let's check out this one, limit as X goes to infinity, a 50 X squared over X squared plus 20. So this is a situation where the powers are the same, X squared and X squared. So powers are the same. So when it's the same, right, the limit is ratio of, co of their coefficients, right? So this limit is going to equal the ratio of the coefficients of x squared and x squared. So think of this having like an invisible one right there, right? So really, the limit of this guy is just going to be a50 over 1, which is just a50. And that's the answer. Okay. So next one is limit as x goes to infinity of 5x squared over 8x plus 7. So this one, the power in the top, which is 5x squared, is greater than the power on the bottom, which is just 8x. So when the power on the top is greater than the power on the bottom, that means the limit is infinity. Okay, so really this limit is just infinity. Okay, last one, limit as x goes to infinity of 72x cubed over 10x to the fifth plus three. So we have an x cubed up here, meaning to the third power and an x to the fifth power. So that means the power in the bottom is bigger than the power in the top. And when that happens, that means the limit is zero. So this limit is going to be equal to zero. But okay, so that is our self-check 1.4 exercises. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Thank you.